All right, first off, let me apologize for the weed eater in the background. That was unexpected, but anyway, I'm at a location that I was at just two days ago, and the reason I came back is because the fall colors have turned just a little bit more, and I've got a little bit more color in this tree um, than I had two days ago, and the conditions are right for a perfect sky. Well, a pretty good sky, and I'll tell you why. First off, I've got medium to high clouds, mostly high clouds, but um, the kind of the bad side is I've got more than 70%, typically 30 to 70% medium to high clouds is, is really good, best for, for a great sky. But nevertheless, I've got high clouds and I think it's gonna do well. And then second, we had a windstorm earlier this morning and that makes for better air quality, which also attributes to a good sky. And then I've got low humidity, which is really perfect. So uh, the conditions are really right for, uh, for good skies. So uh, we're gonna see what happens. And uh, I'm gonna get set up and try to line up this composition and, uh, and kind of beat the one that I had two days ago, which I was very happy with. So and my, my composition is pretty simple. I've got a Christmas scene here in the foreground. This is Texas, so we'll have to forego the snow. But uh, nonetheless, Christmas scene, Christmas lights, uh, once the sun comes down a little bit lower with the fall colors in the foreground. That's my composition, pretty simple but I'm um, looking to improve on the one that I captured two days ago. And, and I, like I said, I, I really like that one. So we'll see, we'll see if the sky kind of pans out. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention um, low to almost no wind. There, there is some slight gusts though, and I'm, I'm seeing some movement in the clouds. So if, it's, uh, if the wind picks up, it's really not gonna make for, for a good sky. So because the wind will kind of blend the clouds together and just yeah, blow away all the great clouds and kind of mix everything up. So, and then I'll get just too much cloud coverage. And I've already got really, looks like too much cloud coverage as it is. So we'll see. So one of the advantages of having having shot something before is already I have I know the composition so I know what lens to get and uh, I, I know roughly where to be so I don't have to fiddle around with my composition. I don't have a lot of time. Probably uh, sunsets in about a half an hour, but it's hard to say when the best light will hit. Look, I'm starting to see a little color in the clouds right now, but uh, but I am worried that I've got too much cloud coverage. But I'm here, might as well stick it out. And I think one of the, uh, one of the things to keep in mind in a situation like this is your focal length. And, you know, like I said, I've already sized this up, so I know what I'm getting into. But a good kind of rule of thumb is when you approach a scene and it looks it looks good to to the naked eye kind of kind of where you're standing and elements in the composition are about where you want them and that's on a full frame camera that's typically typically 50 millimeters on a, a crop sensor about 35 millimeters so that gives you a good idea of what focal length you need whether you want to zoom in compress the scene or maybe you want to get a little bit closer maybe go wider so I think that's uh, just a good tip to help you know what kind of focal length you're going to need when you walk up to a scene. So I'm going with the 24 to 70. And always, always use a lens hood. Well, the wind, humidity, and everything else is cooperating, but uh, yeah, not happening. So I'm right at sunset, and it's just, uh, it, uh, it's an abysmal failure. What can I say? I know I got you all hyped up with these, uh, these big weather predictions, but truly, if I guess if I was uh, an expert weather predictor, I'd probably be making big bucks working uh, somewhere else and, and probably being on television instead of YouTube. But, uh, but anyway, you know, speaking of weather, I think for me, you know, and it's probably more successful more often than not, but I would say I, I tend to keep in mind that you know, I need medium to high clouds. Typically, 30 to 70 percent cloud coverage is good. More than that, as you can see, you know, typically doesn't pan out. And less than that, really doesn't give 
the light a good canvas to paint on. It's not the, it's not the clouds that provide the light, but rather the clouds act as the canvas in which the light is painted on. And if you don't have that canvas up there, then you're not gonna get that great painting, that great artwork. So, so yeah, so just to recap, you know, I, I really, I look for the high clouds, mid, mid to high clouds, and I look for low humidity. I look for, you know, if, if the air quality good, that's always a plus, and low winds are a plus. Typically, if you have gusts of winds or high winds, they'll really just kind of blend your clouds together and, uh, or just move out the clouds all together and it's just unpredictable. So um, I did have some gusts of wind, which uh, I was hoping was hoping that would be better, but it wasn't. But nevertheless, uh, yeah, it is what it is. But I think it's a good rule of thumb, just, to, just as a way of, uh, of predicting um, a, good, a good sunset or a good sunrise. And I, I do use a few apps too. And of course, uh, I guess if it's any consolation to me, I would say, you know, the uh, apps were wrong too. There was good predictions on the apps as well. So, uh, but nevertheless, uh, I'll probably uh, maybe capture one image and just show you, just to show you the difference between what I captured a couple days ago and what I captured uh, just now and, and the difference that light makes. And, um, you know, I mean, the fall colors, I mean, I'm really liking the color in that tree and I, I don't remember it being that way a couple days ago. So it's more of a yellow than, than kind of a golden color that it is right now. So unfortunately not gonna get that light. But you know what? There's always next time. And uh, speaking of next time, I guess uh, I'm gonna go ahead and end the video, but uh, hope you, hopefully I was able to provide you a tip or two that might benefit you down the road. But uh, if you like the video, make sure you hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. And drop me a comment, let me know what you thought. And as always, if I don't see you down the road, maybe I'll see you on the trail. <laughs>